So I am Jérôme from Chateau Les uh, and I am going to talk about uh, the rosé from Provence. Obviously, we just don't do rosé wine in Provence. We do white, red, sparkling as well. Uh, but like we discussed together, let's focus on the rosé uh, winemaking from Provence today. Uh, and the way I'm going to uh, to do this master class is introduce myself and the winery I'm working for. Sadly, it is not my winery. Uh, and then uh, talk about the rosé production in Provence, a little bit of history of Provence. Uh, and mainly that's what is important for me today to share with all of you how we make rosé in Provence and why Provence is the leading uh, region of rosé making. And uh, I don't know how you want to do. Anyone can stop me if I'm not cleared. Uh, if they want, if, if you guys want to ask me a question anytime, or we we will do it as well. Uh, obviously, at the end, if we have a few questions, um, does that sounds good to you? Seems to be. Yes. <laughs> yes. Go ahead. Sorry, it's the time I take to talk. Yeah. <laughs> so, the so, stage is uh, yours. My, myself. So, like I said, I'm working for Chateau Leoub. I've got my little bottles here. One, two. Love by Leoub, the little one. Uh, and you can see on the on the pictures, we cannot go further south in France at Chateau Leoub uh, because we are literally on the sea. You you can. You can see that actually the vines grow 50 meters from the sea at Leoub, which is very, very unique. I know Pascal uh, visited uh, Leoub a few years back, and I am uh, sure he's got some very good memories about it because it's a unique terroir, unique location. Uh, it is an old uh, winery built with a beautiful chateau back in the 15th century. So we have a long, long history of winemaking at Leoub, family owned. Uh, and the family owning Chateau Lioub today are British and they purchased the property back in 1997. Uh, not wanted to buy a vineyard, they wanted a beautiful chateau by the sea and Lioub was for sale with a vineyard. So they become winemaker uh, from day one to day two. And this family is very well known back home in the UK for uh, their organic farming. So they have some a few farms uh, in the UK and they, they grow fruits, vegetables, they have livestock, everything organically. Uh, so that's for been going on for 40 years. So sustainability organically growing uh, is in their genes, in their blood. So when they purchased Chateau Lyoub, they had the vision of uh, becoming the leading winery of uh, in terms of sustainability and organic uh, wine growing as well uh, all about to respect the nature uh, before them the wines were produced at Lyon, but very much sold only in france so we are a fairly new winery on the export market despite our history of winemaking, which, like I said earlier, dates from the 15th century. Uh, and that's me and the winery. Uh, what do I do? I'm not the winemaker. Our winemaker is uh, quite well known. It's Romain Hott, uh, Hott, which is big in Provence. Uh, he is the fourth generation of the Hott uh, family winemaker and he works exclusively for Chateau Leoub uh, and myself I'm working very much close uh, with Romain uh, on terms of the sales I'm looking at all the export uh, sales all over the world to promote and sell this beautiful rosé which we produce in Provence I need to check the time because I tend to speak for way too long <laughs> sometimes. Uh, there is so much to say about Leo, about Provence in general, so I have to, to check the time, time to time. Uh, so, Don't worry, I'm here for that. <laughs> yes, good. <laughs> but I don't want to forget too many, too many points. Uh, so Provence, uh, we all know south of France, a big wine region. 
uh, starts, uh, we can say, from Marseille on the west and finishes almost a uh, you know, little bit before Nice on the east, uh, going at least for 50 kilometers inland. So big wine region called Provence with the, on my side, Côte de Provence appellation. Uh, people tend to, to mix a little bit of cassis, uh, bandol or palette, which are other appellation within that area, but Côte de Provence appellation is where uh, it belongs to. And Provence, uh, we don't realize, but Provence is the oldest wine region in France. Before Bordeaux, before Champagne, before Burgundy, all of them, uh, because uh, the first vines were grown by the Greeks around Marseille, about 600 BC around Marseille. This is where they were planting the vines. So in France to start with. So long history of winemaking uh, in France, uh, which started in Provence near Marseille. Uh, and that's very important because Provence is kind of new on the market in terms of quality wines, but it's not something we have invented, invented because rosé is fashionable. We have been making wine in South of France for a very, very long term time, uh, mainly growing red grapes. And this is why I will explain a little bit later, but why the red grapes become famous to make rosé uh, in Provence. Uh, we have three appellations in Côte de Provence. Uh, we have the Côte de Provence appellation, which is what I've described before, the, the big area. Uh, with some terroir in the Côte de Provence appellation. So Côte de Provence, terroir Saint-Victoire, terroir, let me remind, uh, I need to refresh my memory, terroir uh, Fréjus, terroir Lalonde, where we belong to, terroir Pierrefeu, and Notre-Dame-des-Anges, which is fairly new. So five terroirs within the Côte de Provence appellation. Uh, then we have two other appellations with no terroir uh, dedicated to them. It's Côte d'Aix and Côte du Varrois. So Côte de Provence, Côte d'Aix, Côte du Varrois, three appellations in Côte de Provence. The most, uh, I would say, well-known will be Côte de Provence with those different terroirs. That's where the, the quality really is. Um, that's overall production-wise. Uh, it's about last year, 176, 78 million bottles produced in Provence, Côte de Provence, that includes the reds and the white, uh, which is about 26,000 acres of land, lots, lots of winery in Provence, over 620 wineries, producers in Provence. And on top of that, you, have, you can add about 100 brokers cooperative. So to find you as if there is any buyers in the audience to find your rosé, you really need to do some work uh, to find what you want because there is lots of choices uh, with, of course, lots of quality uh, differences and lots of pricing as well. So you need to do some work uh, to find a good producer like Chateau Les Hubes, which I'm very proud of. <laughs> um, what else can I say? Um, why uh, Provence? It's a question I have always because I don't tell that because I'm French at all. I don't want to have a big head. But why Provence is the leading region on term of worldwide on term of quality? It's very simple. If you are in Provence, the winemakers are going to harvest their best grapes to make rosé. So the picture you have of Chateau Léo, which is a blend of Grenache, Chanceau, Syrah, and Mourvedre, Romain Haute will harvest the best quality Grenache, Chanceau, Syrah, and Mourvedre to make this cuvée. If you go to Italy or, you know, not so far from us, if you go to Bordeaux or Burgundy, obviously their money making is, and their pride and where they're very well known is for their red wine. So they will use the best red grapes to make excellent, beautiful red wines. Now, because rosé is big, everybody in the world makes rosé, but they won't necessarily use the same quality 
grapes or juice to make their rosé. And this is why Provence is still making or having a big impact on quality. This is where you will find more, more quality rosé compared to other regions uh, or all over the world. That's because the winemaker uh, will use their best grape to make the rosé. It doesn't mean that if we produce a white or a red, we will use second quality grapes. We will use, especially at Leo, we will use the best red and uh, grapes and the best white grapes to make white, red and rosé. Hope that clear up why uh, we are still producing very good rosé in Provence, very simple. Obviously, the terroir, the terroir, uh, the climate uh, will help as well. And the terroir will vary different, uh, depending on where we are, like Leub against uh, or nearby the sea. You will have more sand and more schist, but mainly you have schist. I will explain uh, a little bit more details why we have so much schist in Provence and especially next to the sea. Uh, red clay, sand, that's the most important uh, soil you will have. Schist, why that? If you take, you see the beautiful pictures uh, you have on your screen. The sea was inland 800 million years ago, and the sea has left its seabed. There is no fossils, but it's, it has left a slate, a very fragile slate, full of minerality. And the, more, the closer you are to the sea, the more mica schist you will have and the more freshness you will have in your wines. Uh, that's the, the type of soil you will have uh, in Provence. The more inland you go, uh, you, the less mica schist you will have and you may have a bit more stone in that case. Climate. You are all jealous about our climate. Uh, over 3,000 hours of sunshine uh, in Provence. So obviously that will help for the maturation of the grapes, uh, which we have to be careful because in the summer it's very, very hot. And again, there is a difference in terms of rosé style if you are next to the sea like we are or more inland. The closer you are to the sea, the more sea breeze you will have and the sea breeze will cool down the vine at night. So that is important as well uh, to, to understand the, the, the style of rosé. Uh, and for us, if I may speak again about our winery uh, in, in a bit more details, uh, the, the sea breeze is important because it will also during the day dry any moist you will have on the vines to avoid the milieu. And as we know, uh, we are organic at Leub, and the most or the least we need to uh, look to, to treat any disease uh, which can include the milieu, the better it is, of course. Um, how do we make rosé? And I've got two examples here of, you can see hopefully the Love by Leub here and the secret of the Leub, slightly different color. They're all very pale, but this one even paler. And basically this is the wine process in terms of rosé making, which will make those different style of rosé. So to make a rosé, I'm going to joke a little bit, but no, we don't mix red and white, shake it. Uh, that's not at all a good idea. Uh, but th th there is, I would say, mostly uh, three ways uh, to, to make a rosé wine. The first one will be what we call direct press. So, and this is what we do at Leub. Then we have the saignée, uh, the other, and the, 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 the saignée which with the second uh, possibility. So either you harvest by hand or by machine, you can do both in France, at Leub, everything by hand. Uh, and you bring your red grapes into the winery. Two options, direct press, or you're going, so you crush the grapes or you do the maceration. 
And with that maceration, so you start to make a red wine, basically, simple as that, you have two options. The first option is as soon as you've got the start of the maceration, you're going to start to empty the bottom of the tank. As we know, the, 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 the skins, sorry, will be on the top, so the juice will be darker on the top. We don't do the pumping over, so the clear juice on the bottom of the tank after a few hours will be, we will do a soutirage, so we take the clear juice from the bottom of the cube and you have a rosé wine, which had a maceration. So that means you may have a little bit of tannins into it, a bit more darker color because it's hard to control the, 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 the color from that stage. Other options, and obviously, sorry, uh, what's remaining in a tank, you do a red wine with it. So you carry on the, the, the alcoholic fermentation in your tank and you do your red wine. So you put your grapes, maceration, you remove the bottom one, which is clear, you have some rosé wine and you do the fermentation for the red in the tank and you're going to carry on the, uh, the alcoholic fermentation of your, of your rosé in another tank. Rosé, uh, alcoholic fermentation, as we know, uh, must be chilled, uh, so low temperature, below 18 degrees, uh, and that's why most of the winery will use a uh, stainless steel thermoregulated tank to do their fermentation. Uh, second way, you put your grapes into your tank, you start the, the, the maceration, and after a few hours, instead of doing the soutirage, you remove the chapeau, you remove all the skin and all the tank will be rosé uh, juice again and then you start your alcoholic fermentation. And the third way, like I uh, briefly mentioned, what we do the direct press, which is more complicated, more delicate, but because we don't have any maceration, the juice will be slightly higher in terms of quality uh, because you don't have any skin contact or seeds contact uh, at all. So no tannins, no bitterness, the juice is just exceptional. So again, harvest, this team crushed and you're going to do the direct press. So you leave actually the, the steam uh, inside the press and you're going to do a very gentle press for about two and a half hours and the juice will run and touch slightly the skin out of the press and you've got some very juicy yummy rosé wine a uh, rosé juice that wine rosé juice coming out of the press either you have the choice to do a second press or not that's your business model we don't do a second press at leub what's left over goes into uh, back to the soil into compost uh, why we cannot press everything at once simply because if you press too much then all the, the skins and the pips, the seeds will be crushed as well. And you've got the same result as the maceration. We don't want that tannins, tannins and bitterness into the juice. I'm not talking about barrel fermentation. Uh, some starts, some wineries are starting to do the barrel fermentation. It just, first, it's a very personal opinion. It just doesn't work for rosé to have a very heavy, oaky rosé. That's the, my personal conception and vision of it, but you can do a barrel maceration, uh, ferment, uh, fermentation as well. Uh, then with your juice, you do the fermenta alcoholic fermentation, like I said, chilled as much as possible, thermoregulated. And on the rosé, people don't really know that, but you have like white wine or any other uh, color you, 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 you can make with uh, grapes to make a wine. You can have a full, a partial or non at all uh, malolactic fermentation. It all depends if you have the time to do it, if you've got uh, the style of wine you want to make. At Leub, we do a full malolactic fermentation. That means we don't add sulfite after the, uh, the alcoholic fermentation and the wine will go through the full malolactic fermentation to have a very creamy uh, rosé, very soft rosé, extra layers of softness. Other wines we, wineries will do a partial uh, alcoholic uh, fermentation and other winery will stop 
ou euh, Atoll de, 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 de malolactic will stop completely the malolactic fermentation. Uh, and then again, you could put it into a barrel. We don't. We leave actually. We leave the the, the wine now uh, at Leub on their lease for a good four months uh, to bring these extra layers of aromas. So all of that, it depends if you are in a hurry to release your rosé in December or if, or if you are not, like we are, we are going to release our rosé next month only because of the slow process of winemaking. So we know how to make rosé and this is important to understand that to make a quality rosé, it is damn hard work. It's very, very compli complicated to make a good rosé. And the consumer and the distributors, it's important uh, to, for us as winemaker to explain uh, that it takes probably more time, more effort, more dedication to make a quality rosé than a red and a white, which are a little bit more forward in terms of wine, of wine making. Uh, and this is very much a message that Provence is passing on for the last few years. Rosé didn't come famous or trendy just by chance like that. Uh, we, as a Provence winemaker, travel the world, explain what I'm saying today uh, in terms of quality rosé. For sure, don't get me wrong, uh, 20 years ago, rosé, from Prov even from Provence, <laughs> we are not the best one, uh, but this has changed. Uh, because we realize that, you know, why not having quality wines in a bottle of rosé? And this is happening now for the last probably 10 years, maybe a bit more now. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, you can see. Oh. <laughs> I don't know who's playing. Anyway, it's not me. Um, but that's uh, basically the, the Provence introduction and how to make rosé. Now I'm going to talk just about rosé itself we and we now we understand that rosé is a quality wine which is as good or not as good as but different of course but it's a good alternative to red and to white you know when you have a menu or when you go to a restaurant now people consumers think do i need a red a white or rosé before it was red and white only you know rosé was never expected to be on the, even on the wine list some years back uh, or consumers were not thinking to have a bottle of rosé with their meal which is nowadays the uh, the trend you know why not having a good bottle of rosé with their meal and that is important and that's where the quality comes from uh, of course like any other cuvee of red or white, some wines goes better with food than on their own. Same with rosé. You know, you've got some rosé which are boost with enzymes at the beginning of the vinification. Those rosé will be very much, you know, full of uh, fresh tagada, uh, Haribo candies, uh, which are great to drink on their own on the beach or on Pascal uh, yacht or mega yacht, I should say. Uh, <laughs> Or you've got the style of rosé, like we, we really focus at Leoub, that uh, you're really going into depth in terms of quality to make sure you can drink your rosé with food uh, or without, of course. And I'm going to push even further. Stop saying rosé, it's a summer drink. No, <laughs> you can. OK, understand Quebec minus 40. That might be difficult uh, during the winter, but rosé can be drunk all year round as well. That's very important to, to understand. And this is not just me saying that, you know, we've got figures uh, from Chateau Le Buenry, but from the Côte de Provence uh, syndicat CVP as well, we sell hell a lot of rosé in the winter, uh, even in America, in Canada, in UK. Uh, they drink, your consumer drinks lots of rosé in the winter as well. Not as much as summer, but now the sales are very much spread and the consumption all across the year. Uh, coming Valentine's, you know, people are drinking a lot of rosé for Valentine's uh, in, in two weeks' time. 
uh, Christmas, you have no idea how much people are drinking rosé during Christmas as well. Uh, and that's very nice for the Provence winemaker to, to see that change. Uh, and again, this is the hard work of the winemaker in Provence to make sure the rosé quality is as good as a white or a red nowadays. Uh, I'm not saying that I won't drink a rosé from Australia or from somewhere else, uh, even from uh, Santa Barbara County in, in the States, but there will be different style, like, but again, like a bottle of white or a bottle of red. And this is just a beauty for the distributor to access those rosé nowadays. Uh, on term of, I don't know if anybody wants to ask any question at this stage. Because I've been talking. Yeah, ah, Pascal. Micro. Voilà. Hello. Yeah. So, me, I see your wine at the LCBO. Yeah. The last week, very nice bottle with serigraphy around 30 bucks, I think so. I buy the bottle. I was impressed by the quality. No, it was perfect. But today, the rosé, you know, is very, very popular in the USA, particularly in the south of the USA, uh, Texas, Arizona, Florida, California. But we have a lot of choice. And here, I receive a lot of calls during this show, and the importer says, Pascal, what is the best? So it's difficult, this kind of answer, because you are different wine grower from Provence. So, like I said, yeah, if I make a two, yeah, over 600 uh, producers and 100 Exactly. Producers, yeah. It's not easy. So what is the advantage if I want to work with you? What can I say to the importer when they ask me questions? Look at the view. If you buy yeah. a bottle of rosé, he knows his view. It's incredible. I remember. No, no, yes. Yeah, if I yes, you buy wine and you go living there. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, we at, for, for the UB itself, uh, let's forget the Provence and the, the rosé masterclass for a minute. Mm -hmm. uh, we can co go back into it in a, a, after that. But Le uh, is a unique, unique family winery. Uh, yes, we are premium. I'm not hiding it. But I've been very fast into the process of winemaking at Leub. You know, uh, it, it is the direct press. Mm -hmm. But first of all, the, the terroir is unique at Leub. There are only four, yeah, four wineries in Provence with the vineyards growing by the sea. And I explained to you earlier why the proximity is better because you've got more salinity. You've got more freshness, more minerality because of the schist, more uh, homogenized uh, ripeness of the grape because of the sea breeze and the different temperature. As well, uh, I don't scream about it because for us it's, you know, it's very old, but we are certified organic. We work with biodynamic methods and we do everything by hand. So from the planting, to the trimming, the pruning, the green harvest, the harvest, everything is made by hand at Leub. And that is very important. And we have locals, uh, pickers, who does come back every year. They know the hard work we expect from them. Every bunch of grapes will be selected and all the grapes will be selected by the picker in a field. Uh, if you've got a bunch of grapes, they're going to spend 10, 20, sometimes 30 seconds on the bunch of the grapes to remove the damaged berries or the green berries or the overripe berries before it goes into the bucket. It's all about the attention to details we bring at Leub, why we make a difference. And like you said, thank you, the difference at the end of the day, it's all this hard work, even mm -hmm. in the winery. Like I said, we do a direct slow, play, slow press no second press, so the quality, the, the juice coming out is quite small. We, we only do 350,000 bottles at Leub. You know, our competitors, it's five, six, seven millions. Uh, and we are, we're not fighting against them, but we are very small. We do the full malolactic fermentation. We do uh, leave the wine on their lees. 
we wait for the wine to be naturally stable before bottling to avoid adding too much sulfite. All those steps put into each other, all those steps uh, adding extra value on the quality of the wines. This is what we can bring. When people tried a bottle of Leub, they will come back into it. I agree, it's a little bit pricey for everybody. And, you know, we are working hard. For example, the Love, uh, which is uh, uh, LCBO, which is much cheaper as well. It's about 22 bucks, if I remember. Uh, it's still above the 20, 20 bucks. Uh, but we're looking, you know, we, we are hearing that, you know, not everybody can afford a bottle of Leub Rosé. Uh, but people, it's like, you know, it's like uh, food. I'm a very foodie person, that's my background. I will prefer to buy a free range organic chicken, which is going to test extremely good with the bones and make a soup with it. If you buy a $5 chicken, you're not going to enjoy it as much as, yes, you can have chicken every day because you, it's cheap and you can afford to have it every day, but you, know, you will not be able to make a, a broth with it at the end because the, the, the carcass will have no taste, and it's just to have meat in your plate. Do you need to eat meat every day? Not at all. Uh, do you need to drink wine every day? Not at all. Enjoy the quality. That's why, you know, drink a bottle of quality rosé every second day, rather than a mediocrity every day, because the, the, at the end of the month, what you're going to spend is the same. Uh, so on a one-off purchase, this is where we come from, you know, it's all about the, the passion, the hard work of the, the, the people. When we talk about terroir at Leoub, it's not the soil only, it's the soil, but it's the team working the soil. For us, the terroir, it's all those elements put into uh, each other. The attention to details is exceptional at Leoub, and this is why you need to pay a little bit more than some other rosé. I hope it, it was clear uh, for you, clear enough for you. Very clear. And, and, Thank and you. we do, we do, you know, we're listening as well. We know, for example, in US, you know, we have the tariff today. Uh, so we, you know, we have special, I don't like special offer, but we are supporting the tariff as well. Uh, very much hand in to hand with a, a few distributors we have. Uh, sadly, we are not everywhere and this is why we are with the uh, APVSA to, to find new distributors in the States and other provinces in Canada. We, we, list, we are family, we listen, we're listening to every, everyone, uh, and we've been working very hard, not mainly you know, in the States uh, with this new tariff. And I can tell you the price for the last two years in the States hasn't changed at all on the retail side. Uh, so we, we know we are not giving a 50% discount, but we are working together to make sure uh, the, the, the price remains the same as well. I know you're still traveling a lot, Jérôme. You're still Pardon traveling me? a lot. You are still traveling a lot I, to I be am, with, yeah. uh, with your customers. Yeah, indeed. Yeah. Uh, right now, you know, I'm not in France. Uh, I am touring the, the Caribbean, uh, which is a big market for us. Uh, as soon as I have a chance to go back to Canada, I was with my uh, agent from Ontario this morning on, on Zoom. As soon as I can travel back to America, I will, of course. This is as well the support we bring. It's not, you know, OK, I'm selling you a bottle of wine uh, from Leoub, job done. No. We're going to bring all the way through support. Uh, it could be sales meeting, it could be wine maker dinner, it could be visiting customers when that will be allowed again. Uh, so yes, I do travel still. Uh, I've got my file of document to prove that I can travel still. <laughs> and lots of uh, tests, uh, COVID tests. Yes. And so which are the countries that, or the markets that you are targeting today? Um, all of them. <laughs> well, let, let, let's yes. put it uh, the other way. My biggest market share. So 50% of the wines are sold domestically in France, 50 on the export. 
Our biggest market uh, in the export will be UK, followed by uh, the Caribbean. Uh, but today I need to develop more the USA, uh, all the East Coast. I've got a good distributor in California. Uh, but like you, someone mentioned Texas, I need to be in Texas, I need to be in Florida, I need to be in New York, uh, in Massachusetts, uh, in Maine, Vermont. I mean, I've got so many consumers, sometimes one shop sending me an email uh, on a general email of Leoub, info at chateauleoub.com, said, I've got these customers who want Leoub, do you have a distributor? And every time I have to say, sadly, no. <laughs> so... Everywhere in the USA, I would say, except California for, for the time being. Uh, uh, across Canada as well, I need to be better. Uh, Mex I've got calls from Mexico. I've got calls from other islands in the Caribbean. I'm not everywhere. Uh, so, yeah, the, the, even though we, we produce, I would say, today half a million bottles, there, were, there is still some juice uh, for, the, for the distributors. Definitely. Um, so yeah, I'm open to any countries or provinces or states uh, to, to sell uh, the, the Leub range. Excellent. We still have uh, two minutes left. Um, Oof, only two. Oh, okay, that's fine. <laughs> There is a question uh, from Melanie Aubert. Uh, Melanie, you can take the you can take the microphone if you want to to address the the question. Oops, sorry. Well, I uh, hi everyone. Hi, I was Melanie. just wondering where Jérôme is uh, right now in the Caribbean. <laughs> in, in 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 Barbados. In Barbados. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I went to Saint Bart, uh, Saint Martin, Antigua, and I, um, uh, I have to. Uh, uh, it's horrible to say that, but I'm stuck in Barbados. So I cannot go anywhere. Right, because they have a two-week quarantine from next week. Right? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's complicated. I could leave the island, but when I come back, I have some more quarantine to do, and they've been lacking a lot with the COVID test now. Uh, it takes hedges to to get your result. Um, yeah, so I am in Barbados. Where about are you, Melanie? Uh, I'm in Ottawa, Canada. Okay. But we, we do have a sailboat in Canada, which we can't ah. get to right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, here yeah, Cancun is open. Um, Cancun is open, so all the airports are open. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. so I, I have a question, if there is uh, no other question from the, um, from the audience. Uh, what is, how do you see uh, the future uh, climate change wise? How do you see the future of the grapes in Provence? I'm, I'm very sorry, someone no, it's was okay. talking to you. Question. Yeah, sorry. So, how do you see the future of Provence uh, climate wise? I mean, do ah, you good question. think. Well, yeah. That was part, I've got a few points. I know, I'm, like I said, I talk too much. <laughs> I'm so passionate about uh, the wines and, and uh, the rosé in general. But the climate change has changed already, uh, even in Provence. Uh, three years ago, four years ago, we were doing the harvest late August. Last year, the harvest uh, started on the 22nd of August. It's incredible how much ahead we have we had to do the harvest. So there is an impact, for sure. Uh, it doesn't change the style of the wines. It doesn't change the quality at all. Uh, personally, we don't irrigate at all at Leoub, no irrigation. Uh, that's part of the biodiversity we bring to Leoub. Again, to answer Pascal Ferrand earlier, we're looking, we're not just organic, we look at all the sustainability, how we can manage the water, uh, and the, even though the harvest have been much earlier, nothing dramatic has changed yet. Where that will go, who can know? We, we, we just don't know. Uh, it's all about what we're doing. It's the water management. Make sure uh, the, the soil keeps enough moist when it does rain. 
Uh, it's all about this biodiversity, bringing shed as well, bringing more trees and all of that. I don't, exactly. because Provence, it's always been fairly hot, you know, it's 30 degrees during summer. Uh, it's been hotter the last, oh, forgot, sorry, closing the door. Be careful, you all have the vacuum coming. <laughs> yeah, sorry, it's busy <laughs> office okay. where I am today. So I don't see any dramatic changes right now. Uh, personally, uh, talking with the winemaker, Roma Hot as well. Uh, we, we are in a good position uh, because south of France, it's a very hot climate anyway. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So um, is there any more questions for Jerome? Otherwise, we can, we can say thank you and to all the participants. And uh, so please don't hesitate to meet uh, Jerome at his booth. He will be um, happy be there. To, to share information <laughs> and talk about his wines. And I, hopefully I, I can be in, um, in that lovely place exactly, where, the, yeah. where the vineyards are. Yeah. Thank no, you. Very thank much you, thank you all. It's uh, important for us, as you know, like I said, as a winemaker, to explain from Provence why we do such beautiful wines, um, and we are proud of it. Okay. Merci. Thank à bientôt. you. Merci. Merci à tous. Bye. Bye, Jérôme.